Okay, so last semester you had something like this. You want to multiply. Number one, let's suppose we had 5 times 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. What did you all do last semester to multiply this oh. out? We distributed it. Distributive property. Use a distributive property. So every term, every term, and using the word term, every term that's inside this parentheses has to be multiplied by 5, because that's what this says. This says 5 times this polynomial, five, uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. All right, so how many terms do you see that's inside the parentheses? How many terms are there? There are three. So each of those has to be multiplied by what? Five. And so what you did to help you was that you drew some arrows like this. That's what you did. And so what's 5 times 2x squared? 10x squared. What's 5 times a negative 3x? Negative 15x. And what's 5 times 4? 20. All right, that was the easy kind. Number two. Then you had some variables involved that you were distributing. So let's suppose we had this. Let's suppose we had um, x cubed times 2x squared minus 6x minus 5. Let's say we had that. So x cubed times 2x squared minus 6x minus 5. Before we go on, something else you got to remember from last semester. And that's this. If I have x to the 8th times x to the 3rd, x to the 8th times x to the 3rd. Let's talk about x to the 8th right now. The 8, you, it's obvious that's the exponent, correct? Mm -hmm. What is that x called? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a variable, but, but we have a name for it. It's base. the base. Very good. The base. The x is the base. So when I do this one, when I look at x cubed, 3 is the exponent, x is the base. base. You learned a rule that was called the product rule. When you multiply like bases, you do what to those exponents? You add them. Very good. So what is x to the 8 times x to the 3rd? x to the 11th. When multiplying like bases, add exponents. Do you still have that worksheet, Mr. D? What worksheet? You gave in 98, you gave no, I, I don't, I, I don't. product rules. No. You do? Bad teacher. All right. So x to the 8 times x to the 3rd power is x to the 11th. So when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. All right. So let's distribute now. What is x cubed times 2x squared? 2x to the 5th. Y'all agree? Okay. Because x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. What is x cubed times a negative 6x? Now, here's what I have. I have this. I'm, uh, eventually, I'm going to have x cubed times x, right? If there's no exponent, what is it understood to be? 1. So what is x cubed times x? x to the fourth. When you multiply like bases, you do what? Add exponents. So what is x cubed times a negative 6x? Negative 6x to the 4th. We just talked about x cubed times x is x to the 4th, right? So why would you say x squared? x cubed times a negative 6x is a negative 6x to the 4th. 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay. What is x cubed times a negative 5? All right, and there's your answer. Okay? Number three. <coughs> Suppose we had this. Suppose we had 3xy, 3xy times 5xy squared minus 7y plus 2x. Keep in mind that everything you learned in, in a previous course is unique from future courses, right? So if you're going to succeed in, in, in dealing with factoring, then you better know this kind of stuff. Or have a worksheet. So, so when I distribute, 
when I distribute, first of all, 3 times 5 is what? 15. 15. Now let's deal with the variables. I have xy times what? xy squared. XY squared. Multiply like base, you do what to those exponents? Add, Add them up. So what's x times x? x squared. What is y times y squared? y cubed. So that's what I get. So I get 15x squared y cubed. Because x times x is x squared. y times y squared is y cubed. Now the next one. What's 3 times a negative 7? All right. Now let's do the variables. What is xy times y? xy squared. So 3xy times a negative 7y is a negative 21xy squared. What is 3x times 2x? I'm sorry, 3xy times 2x? 6x squared y. Y'all agree? Because look, just what I have. I have xy times x. xy times x. So what's x times x? So x squared y. So that's 6x squared y. Number four. All right, number four, let's suppose you had this. Let's suppose you had 8v squared times u squared plus 2uv minus 6v squared. Uh, cubed. Let's put cubed here. Cubed. So 8v squared times u squared plus 2uv minus 6v cubed. All right, you want to multiply this? You're going to use what property? Distributive. Distributive property. So what is 8v squared times u squared? A v squared u squared. A v squared u squared. There's nothing you can do with that. What is 8 times 2? 16. All right, so I know I'm going to have a 16, right? So let's think about the other part. What is v squared times u, v? V cubed times what? U. U. Or if you want to put it in alphabetical U. order, yeah. okay. we tend to put it in alphabetical order. So u comes before v, so you can say u, U. v cubed. V. So 16 u, v cubed. Yeah. Over here will be eight, uh, u, square, uh, u squared, v squared. Doesn't matter, guys, the order which you put them does not matter, okay? Does not matter. But we tend to put them out for better for My math lab's not going to matter. Okay. <coughs> All right, what is 8 times a negative 6? Negative 48? Yeah. What is V squared times V cubed? V to the fifth. V squared times V cubed. Remember the product rule from last semester. When you multiply like base, you do have those exponents, add them up. And make sure you understand why you add them. Because remember, doesn't V squared, isn't V squared V times V? <laughs> it's all right. And V cubed, is, isn't V cubed V times V times V? Yeah. And how many factors of V do you have? Five. So that's why you see that five there. Okay? All right. So that was 48 V to the fifth? All right. Number five. Number five. Suppose we had this. Six X cubed Y to the fourth times X squared minus 3xy plus 5y. So 6x cubed y to the fourth times x squared minus 3xy plus 5y. All right, distributive property. All right. X, yes, we're good. So, so basically, you're in your mind, you're saying, all right, this is x cubed y to the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. Times x squared. You can only multiply like bases and add exponents. So I have an x cubed times an x squared. So that would be x to the what? Fifth. Fifth. And you're left with y to the 
fourth. <coughs> right? Okay. So it's going to be 6x X to the fifth, y to the fourth. All right, now the next one. What's 6 times a negative 3? All right. What is x cubed y to the fourth times xy? x fourth y to the fifth. Yep. All right, so x to the fourth, y to the fifth. And then 6 times 5 is 30. All right, what is, what is x cubed? x cubed y to the fourth times x y. Cubed. y to the fifth. Correct. So you multiply like bases, you add exponents. Product rule. Product rule. So we've been using a product rule here from last semester. So basically when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So basically what's going to happen when we get into the factoring part, first thing you're going to do, first thing you're always going to ask yourself is, can I factor out a GCF? So, and that's going to be the first set of problems you're going to be asked to deal with. And it's going to look, look like these. You have something times a polynomial in parentheses. And to help yourself, you just kind of distribute again and see if what you get is the original problem. It's not that difficult. You're going to see it's not that difficult. Alright. Now let's look at six. Yes. Yes. So three M N squared minus six M cubed N plus three N minus five. So you multiply this. What property are you going to use? Distributive. Distributive property. How many terms are inside that parentheses? No. <laughs> four. four, right? Four. So there are four. All right. So basically, going to say this times this, this times this, this times this, and this times this. So what's negative five times three? Negative All right. Now let's kind of. Um, look look at what we have here. We have m cubed into the fifth, and that's being multiplied by m n squared, right? When you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So what do I get? N to the seventh. All right, so that's negative 15, m to the fourth, n to the seventh. And you don't have to show any of that work. You, most of it you can do in your head very easily. Just be careful. What's a negative times a negative? Five. All right, all right, you got to remember all that too. What's 5 times 6? All right, so what is m cubed into the fifth times m cubed in? M4. M4? M6. M to the 6, right? M6. N to the 6. Wait, wait, how you, wait. 3 plus 3 is 6, 5 plus 1 is 6. Yeah, it's just one M. What? It's just yeah. one M. Oh, but it's five. That's a three. That's, that's a, a three, three right three. here. And that's a three. Oh, three over the M? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had three over the N. So nothing is over the N? Yeah. No, just, well, yeah, it's just one. Right. Yeah, that that's M cubed N. Okay. M cubed N. Okay, so then it's... Yeah, now remember, it, the, the worksheets are typed, so it, you, the exponents will be... Clear. Okay. Yeah. You know, my handwriting is pretty good, but... Uh, no, lies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Plus... Negative. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Negative. All right. So what is m cubed into the fifth times n? m cubed n to the sixth. Okay. All right. And then, what's a negative 5 times negative 5? 25. Positive 25. And so what is m cubed? So, so the question is, what is negative 5 m cubed into the fifth times a negative 5? Positive 
to the 25 M cubed in to the fifth. Yep, that's it. Exactly. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, another review. Okay, so remember, remember, basically what was happening here is this. You had a polynomial. Remember, poly means one or more monomials. You had a polynomial being multiplied by a monomial. One. one. Monomial means one. So to, to multiply this out, you use the distributive property, right? Okay. Let's look at seven. What if you had this? You remember how to do this? Still multiplying. You have 5x minus 2 times x plus 3. So, so you, you no longer have a polynomial being multiplied by a monomial. You have a polynomial, one or more, being multiplied by a polynomial. But what do you notice about those two polynomials? There's a special name for them. Do you remember? They're binomials. Bi means two, right? So so you have those two polynomials, and they're both binomials. Do you remember last semester how to multiply two binomials? FOIL method. F-O-I-L. You can only use the FOIL if you multiply in two what? Binomials. That's, that's the only time you can do that. Now, the FOIL method is a special form of distributive property. It still involves the distributive property. We're just using the FOIL method, that, that acronym, to kind of help us multiply this thing out. But it is, it is a distributive property, but not the kind that you would think of. So FOIL. For, uh, F stands for what? First. First. O stands for outer. I stands for Inner and L stands for less. So when we when we start factoring trinomials, you're going to use reverse FOIL many times. So so if you're going to factor, you need to first of all know how to FOIL because you're going to be dealing with reverse FOIL as you go through this. So let's go multiply this out using a FOIL method, and I can do that because I'm multiplying two binomials. All right, so remember what F means, first. First means I take the first term of the first binomial, the first term of the second binomial, and I multiply them. So basically, remember you drew some, some arcs? You kind of did this. First times first. So what's 5x times x? 5x squared. 5x squared. Now let's do the outer. The outer means the terms on the outside. On the outside. On the ends. So this end times this end. The terms of the ends. That's the outside terms, right? So if you look at this like like four terms, one, two, three, four, aren't those on the outside? Yes. Those are on the what? Inside. So what's five x times a positive three? Fifteen x. Now the inner, the inside. What's a negative 2 times a positive x? Negative 2. Okay. And now the last. The last means this. The la Remember when we did the first, we said first terms of each binomial? Mm -hmm. Last means last terms of each binomial. So what's the last term here? Negative 2. What's the last term here? 3. 3. So what do I get? Negative, negative 6. Negative 6. All right. So that's what I have so far. But remember... When when you're dealing when we dealt with polynomials, there were many times when we could combine like terms. How many terms do you see here? How many terms? Four. Four. Are any of them alike? Yes. yes. Fifteen x and a negative two x. I can combine. I have fifteen x's here. I have a negative two here. How many do I have? Thirteen. Thirteen. So this becomes five x squared plus thirteen x minus 6. We tend to put this in descending order. Remember the word descending order last semester? Yeah. Descending order. Descending order means from largest exponent to the constant. The largest exponent is 2. This exponent is what? X is being raised to what power? One. First, and there's your <coughs> constant. Always put the constant last. 
a trinomial. No, you put them in order like this. Descending order? Okay, well, when you find out, let me know. Okay. <laughs> I'm it's descending order. No, it's descending order. Okay. <laughs> I kept telling you, you said no. It's, it's okay. Well, I knew it wasn't trinomial. Wait, it is a trinomial. I knew that wasn't I, what I was asking. Okay. All right. Number eight. <laughs> I was like, well, when you find out, let me know because I need to know. <laughs> All right. So. How are you going to multiply those two? That's 5y. That's, that's, that's uh, 3x plus 5y times 2x minus y. How are you going to multiply that? Foil. Foil. All right, so first, outer, and the last. That's all you have to do. First, okay. outer, and the last. What's the first? Three. Now, it, it helps if you draw, draw those, those arcs. So 3x times 2x is? Nope. He six said 6x, six 6x squared. Six X squared. They are understood. So x times x is x to the second. What's the outer? 3x times negative y. 3x times negative y is a? Negative 3xy. The inner. What's 5y times 2x? 10xy. Yeah, I should have drawn it down here. 10xy, right? Yeah. And now the last. What's 5y times a negative y? Negative 5y squared. Negative 5y squared. All right. How many terms do you see? Four. Now, it's not always the case you'll be able to combine like terms. You'll see that. But if you can, you do it. Can I combine any like terms? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have 3xy and a negative 10xy. So I'll forget how many xy's do I have? Seven. Seven. So what's my answer? 6x squared plus 7xy minus 5y squared. Number nine. Suppose I have 5x minus 2 squared. 5x minus 2 squared. What's that the same as? Well, okay, well, that's what it says. So 5x, 5x, minus 2 5x minus 2 times itself, right? So if I have, let's say, 8 squared. 8 squared. Isn't that 8 times 8? Yes, so if I have 5x minus 2 squared, isn't that 5x minus 2 times itself? Yes. Okay. So, so you're going to see things like this. You just rewrite it as two binomials, and now you know you're going to use the what? Foil. Foil method. So what's 5x times 5x? What's the outer? Yes. 5x times 2, negative 2. 5x times a negative 2 is a what? Negative, negative 10x. What's the inner? Negative 10x also. And what's the last? Negative 4. Negative 2 negative 2 is a positive 4. And then combine you like terms. Can I combine anything? Yes. 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 So 25x squared minus 20x plus 4, right? Number 10. Suppose I had this. 8m minus 3n squared. So when we do factoring, you are going to notice that when, when you factor it, you're going to have more than one variable involved. So we have 8m minus 3n squared. How are you going to write this? 8m minus 3n times 8m minus 3n. Okay. All right, and then you're going to do what? Foil. <clears throat> so let's do the first. What's 8m times 8m? 
6 4m squared. The outer. What is 8m times a negative 3n? Don't you guys give me the sign, dude. Don't just say 24. You know what it is. Negative 24m n. The inner. What's a negative 3n times 8m? Uh, negative 24. Okay. And the last, the last. What's a negative 3n times a negative 3n? Positive 9 what? N squared. Very good. Combining like terms, and there's your answer. What do I get? Forty-eight. M n. Plus nine n squared. Okay. All right. So uh, now, last semester you spent more time on this, obviously, um, but we don't have that luxury here. Okay. So that was a quick review. You need to know that in order to be able to factor, because when you factor, you're gonna be thinking about all these these things as you factor. All right, so there are there are two worksheets that in, involve this. So that's a review, but I need you to work on that review. Um, so let me show you what it looks like. All right, so here's here's the first one. So look at this one. All of this is going to involve what property? Distributed, Distributed property. Okay, distributed property. <laughs> All these are going to involve what? Foil. Foil. All right, you have to practice this in order to go through with factoring. Now, remember, guys, I know it's quite a few worksheets, and you have like like full time job, and you have, and some of you said, I'm taking 10 classes, and. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I. But, you know, for every H, you can drop what? Three, right? Just keep that in mind. But, but read the syllabus. For every H, you can drop three, right? Isn't that what the syllabus says? 